Hello folks, my name is Rod Machado. Nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, is more important to a person's success at learning to fly than, well, having a good flight instructor. Yes, there are many good flight instructors in the aviation business, just as there are many good doctors and lawyers in their respective businesses. Unfortunately, there are also individuals who don't represent the professions well. Sorry, but, well, that's life in the big run-up area. You see, unlike golf clubs and fancy cars, flight instruction is likely to be something that, well, a prospective pilot has never shopped for in his or her life. And that's why most folks have nary a clue about what questions to ask or, well, even if they should ask questions in order to winnow the instructor wheat from the chaff. Without the right information, lots of students end up being chaffed from the chaff. And people who should have been pilots become pedestrians. I don't want that for you. So I've assembled a list of 10 questions that will help prospective students find the best instructor for them. And that includes you if you happen to be a pilot that's going back for advanced training. The objective here is to try to spot someone who will be a good instructor. Of course, no single question is going to reveal all of the strengths and weaknesses of an individual, but ask a variety of well-targeted questions and you'll learn a lot about someone. So please keep in mind that a good CFI is worth his or her weight in airplane parts. And once you find one, you must treat him or her well, pay him what he's worth, and sing his praises to everyone. Good CFIs seldom get the credit they deserve. So here is a list of 10 questions that will help you evaluate a prospective flight instructor for your training. Question number one, why did you become a flight instructor? And the reason you want to know this is because the person might talk only about flying professionally. Most likely, this is someone who is flying to build time. Now, there's nothing wrong with this, of course, but if he doesn't talk about mention or even hint that he loves to fly and share flying with others, then I, I might be a bit concerned about flying with him and he not having my best interest at heart. Question number two. What are the chances of your being hired by an airline or another aviation company in the next six months? If she says that she's got a good chance of being hired by a commuter airline in the next six months, you know there's also a very good chance that she won't be around long enough to see you through private pilot training. If she says that hiring in the next half year is unlikely, then the chances are good that she'll be around long enough to take you all the way through the private pilot certificate. On the other hand, I can't say enough about the influence a good flight instructor has on a student's initial development as a pilot. You see, if this person is a gem with whom you're simpatico, then it's probably in your best interest to fly with this instructor even for a few hours, despite him heading off for an airline job in the next few months. At least you'll have a taste of good flight training, which will make you a more educated consumer when shopping for an instructor at a later time. Question number three, how many private pilots have you trained and how many have passed their check ride on the first attempt? You see, if the person hasn't trained any private pilot students, then it's likely that he is either a new instructor or he doesn't prefer doing primary training. A new CFI is often very enthusiastic and for this reason alone, he could do a great job for you. Sure, he's new, but the possibility exists that he can at least teach you to fly as well as he can, right? That's a good thing. On the other hand, there's nothing wrong with looking for someone with experience if that pleases you. You see, I'd be worried if this person trains private pilots and has had more than three out of 10 applicants fail on their first attempt. In this instance, it might be wise to look for someone with an A or B plus or even B average instead of a below C average. Question number four, how many hours will it take for me to solo if I fly three times a week and learn in the simplest airplane available? And the answer to this question, even in a tower controlled environment varies, but it should be around 14 to 18 hours. If you are told it typically takes 25 hours or more to solo, then this should raise an eyebrow. It shouldn't take 25 hours or more to solo an airplane when flying frequently in a basic training airplane, assuming that you don't have any learning difficulties or personal struggles to cope with.
Number five, what is the average length of time and how many hours does it take your typical student who trains consistently to obtain a private pilot certificate? The national average for the private pilot certificate is around 70 hours, but there are instructors who can put people through in under 50 hours within a five to six month period. Sure, weather, availability, training schedules, funds, and so on all affect this time, but 70.1 hours is the average and there are many students who complete their training in fewer hours. There's no reason you shouldn't be in that group. If the CFI says that his students who train consistently take 70 plus hours, then I check around for someone with a more favorable number. If this person says that it also takes a year to obtain a private pilot certificate, well, then this isn't the person for you. Most people who fly consistently plan to spend no more than six months to complete their private pilot training. Question number six. If we assume that I'm your typical student, and if we assume that I might have the problems of an average student, what areas of difficulty might I expect to encounter during flight training? You see, the response to this question will tell you a lot about the person's teaching personality. If he says that most students are lazy and don't work hard enough, then he's likely not a good manager or motivator. Most people who pay money for flight training aren't lazy and do indeed want to work hard. If the CFI tells you that most folks basically are afraid of stalls and emergency procedures, then this person may have difficulty assuaging the anxieties of his students. The fact is that most people aren't frightened of stalls and emergency procedures if their flight instructor is sensitive enough to introduce and explain them properly. Now, if the flight instructor says that it takes a long time to learn how to land, then you want to be suspicious here too. It doesn't take a long time to learn how to land. In fact, given accommodating traffic and weather, a capable student can learn how to land in about four to six hours of pattern work. So use a bit of common sense here. If the CFI is emphatic about the specific areas where his students struggle and have difficulties, then compare this with what other CFIs have told you. It's quite quite possible that this person has problems teaching in these areas. Now, if the CFI says that most students have general challenges, but these are really nothing that can't be overcome, then this is the type of attitude you're looking for. Question number seven, tell me about your best and your worst students and why they became your best and worst. This will tell you a lot about the CFI, the flight instructor himself. It's a variation on question six, but it can also provide you with insights into what this flight instructor likes or dislikes in his students. Of course, if the instructor says that he likes students who understand when he loses patience or is late, then it's possible he is a hothead and is late a lot. If this flight instructor says he likes students who are serious about learning to fly, then he's probably serious about teaching too. So listen carefully to his responses and let your head and gut tell you whether this person is right for you. Question number eight, how much ground instruction do you do on every lesson? If the flight instructor says that he does very little ground instruction and suggests that the student's homework should cover this, well, keep looking. Good CFIs do both pre-flight briefings and post-flight debriefings. Now that's ground instruction. It's not unreasonable to have at least one hour's worth of ground instruction, which you'll rightly pay for, of course, on every two to 2.5 hour lesson block. Question number nine, may I speak with three of your previous private pilot students? If he says no, or makes it seem like such a thing wouldn't be possible unless a Ouija board is involved, then consider fly with somebody else. If he says yes, then interview these students or former students. Ask them about the quality of training they received. This is powerful because this provides an excellent window into the training style and capabilities of this individual. If the previous student suggests that this CFI has a problem with patience and tends to yell, then find another flight instructor. Question number 10, can I take a look at your social sites, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram? And this is my last question, but it certainly isn't the least important. Inasmuch as a good flight instructor is dependent on someone being of good character, you can tell a lot about a person's character by what they post on these pages. 
you shouldn't see your potential flight instructor kicking a dog or taking a smaller person's lunch money. <laughs> if someone is foolish enough to advertise this type of irresponsible behavior for all the world to see, then stay away from this individual. No doubt about it, you'll eventually lose your lunch money if you don't. Keep in mind that you're looking for specific trends in the answers given here. Stop, look, and listen carefully. You'll be surprised at what people reveal about themselves in what they say and what they omit from normal conversation. Finally, ask yourself if you'd like to spend 40 plus hours in the cockpit and under the supervision of this person while learning to fly. If not, then find someone else. Remember, you're the consumer, so act like one. If you feel that this person is right for you, then agree to fly with him or her for no more than three lessons up front, after which time you'll commit to the rest of the training if the relationship is working out. If this person isn't right for you, this makes it a lot more comfortable to excuse yourself from the limited training arrangement. As the old Chinese saying goes, it's better to look for a good instructor for three years than to spend even three minutes with a bad one. Although, I must admit, it sounds much better in its original Mandarin language. Greetings, folks. My name is Rod Machado, and I'd like to introduce you to my new e-learning-based Private Pilot Ground School. Now, if you're thinking about learning to fly, either to become a professional pilot or a private pilot, or you just want to prepare for your upcoming flight review, then this is the course for you. Now, what makes this course different from other aviation training programs is that it's very comprehensive. In fact, the material covered in this online course is what you typically cover in a college semester ground school. Most important, this course is highly educational, it's engaging, and it's fun. And if you're like me, and I know I am, I want to have an enjoyable learning experience whenever possible. And this course makes that possible. It moves you one step closer to becoming a private pilot and pursuing other aviation goals. So click the link below or visit rodmachado.com to begin your flight training experience.